Hi everyone. Last week we introduced our sintered mesh freeze dry trays, which have two sublimation fronts and thus freeze dry a lot faster than the conventional method. We did some testing this week and just wanted to share some of that footage and discuss with you. If you're interested in this topic, keep watching. In case you haven't been following along, I'm going to post the link below on two videos that you should watch. The first one is using a nylon mesh to prep a freeze dry tray. And the second is a discussion on the sintered mesh tray that we are discussing today. The fundamentals of the process are sound. We're trying to use two sublimation fronts to speed up the lyophilization time. And we're reducing the amount of water in the tray in order to reduce freeze drying times. Fairly simple. Now, the difference in the process is that we use a lot more water than would normally be used when you're loading a patty. And the water is necessary to create interstitial spaces between the hash particles so that water can sublimate and exit the patty, especially on the bottom part or the thicker parts of the patty, which is why there's limits to how thick a patty can be, which is why in a traditional process, were asked for a pancake batter like consistency. We discussed this in, in the previous video. Now, it's counterintuitive that we're adding so much water when we're advocating for less water. And the reason is when you have a very wet slurry, you have a lot of water, it makes a flat surface. And if you follow along, you can see how quickly the water drains from the process naturally and the water surface tension keeps just enough water in the process for the interstitial spaces to be wide enough for ice crystals to form and then create channels for the water to sublimate during the lyophilization process. As you can see, water percolates through the bottom of the tray, making it easy to remove the excess water that we've introduced in the previous step. Additionally, we can assist the process by using some sort of terry cloth or paper towel to wick the water from the sieve. Another step that may help the process is by breaking up the patty to create more channels for the sublimation process to occur successfully. This is what a normal patty looks like using a normal freeze dryer tray. And what's counterintuitive about this process is that it contains so much water. And I understand the water is there to create these interstitial spaces for the water to be able to sublimate. But if you notice these types of patties, you have these large crystals that eventually form. And at the edges of these patties, it's just mostly water. So of course, this is counterintuitive because if what we're trying to do is remove water, there is so much more work left here for the freeze dryer to do. And that's why I think that the alternative method with the centered mesh tray is just so much better. The argument for having the excess water is to create the interstitial spaces for the water to be able to sublimate. Remember, we address this twofold. One, by having two sublimation fronts on the top and on the bottom so the water can sublimate from the top and the bottom. And two is by removing excess water. And the main criticism that I've received is that the process does not have enough water and you will not have successful sublimation. Well, take a look at these images. These are 10 times magnification images of a dry patty as is. So if you notice the structure, take a look at all of the holes in between the hash. And so these are the holes left over by the actual water that's there. So if you see our patty, our patty looks very dry because we've removed as much water as we can. But because of water surface tension, there is always a lattice that allows crystal structures to form and water to sublimate. Look at these pictures and tell me that I'm wrong. I challenge you to prove to me that this method is wrong. And at the end of the day, the proof is in the hash. And you can see in these videos, the hash is uniformly dry. There are no wet spots. There's no collapse. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this method. And the benefit is, that you can either make a thicker patty or you can reduce trying times. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.